High flying, EDG feeling damn good and keep themselves alive in this series. We are going to a game five, two apiece, as BLG will be taking themselves back onto that blue side. But gotta 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 just calm ourselves down. It's only an opportunity. True, but I'm feeling that playoff buff. I'm feeling <sighs> that world's potential. I feel that written in the script somewhere is that EDG Who make gave it you out. Script? Get that out of here. <laughs> you can't show that on broadcast. You and LS, man, my there God. There is no script, I'm sorry. Yeah, you and LS just leaking scripts. It's unbelievable. But yes, I do completely agree. You feel it. It's like, you know, it's, like, it's a whole thing behind you. It's just like, but what if? You know, it's always been a way. You kind of get used to the, the, the routines. And I want to talk about that a little bit more, but we got to give props to our MVP of that game four. It had to be Scout. Scout There's set no up surprise. everything. 88% kill participation. Once again, the winning formula is give Silas that first blood and he will dominate the map for you. It's been happening in game two and now in game four. BLG are running out of bands to throw at this guy because they've been using three of their bands every single game at the minimum to keep Scout down. He keeps on finding ways to carry. Yeah, and overall just played that game incredibly well. Really, really solid matchup from him. And EG, that was the quickest game of the series. That's them kind of finally finding that snowball they've been looking for all you know series long. Even in the first game they won, it wasn't really there. And I feel like it was down to JJ and Scout just being given the opportunity to roam and make plays around the map. Ragus is one of JJ's best champions. You give him that early ganking potential. He's so devastating with it. And this is something they did very well in game four, defending their bottom lane. Scout outplays a 1v4 underneath his tower to give the objective trade advantage to EDG. They actually snowballed two towers off of it, massively uh, dominating uh, the top side. And Jinu gets a good gold lead off of this one too. And this was really close from Scout actually getting extra kills in here. You can see him going in on the back end of that with his ultimate up. And finally, the game-winning play. Great crowd control duration from JJ, making sure ADD goes down. And this is the finishing touches right here. The three-man knockup ultimate on the Nautilus. Absolutely decimating BLG. And they find themselves into this match decider, the game five. Play your silver scrapes, play whatever ritual you have, ladies and gentlemen, as your fifth and final game. But kind of an, an unsung hero within that last game. Mako looks like he's finally finding his shot calling rhythm as he's the one who sets up the, you know, kind of the hex flash into the knockback. And the fact that they don't waste any time just separating everybody out, literally handing iBoy several targets on a plate and going, pick your pick. Pick one, whichever one you want to go for. He comes out with a quadra. They clean up from there, and again, one cannot underestimate the the kind of decision making from EDG to go. We can win this game now, and they barrel up the mid lane. They take down absolutely everything. I, if I'm BLG, I'm starting to sweat a little bit. You know, if we've seen Meteor, you know, kind of you know keep taking the sweat off him, he's going to be booking him when he comes out now. It, it definitely is the case. If Mako is starting the fights for EDG, you can expect good things to happen. You see the difference between him and the rest of the team, Scout, Jijia, and Jinu. I don't think uh, their Korean players or their new rookie jungler have had the best communication. A lot of the times, it still comes down to Mako to be the one to close out the deal, as he just demonstrated there. Gonna look at the teams. Uh, the side selection will go to BLG on blue side. The winningest side so far in this series, 100% win rate. One game for both these sides to decide a season. Legacy for EDG, new adventures for BLG, something they've never really tasted as an organization. EDG though, they've been here many, many a times on these playoff stages. And this is where experience starts to come in. This is where you know, the veteranship of some of your players will start to have to really show its worth. The likes of Kuro, the Scouts, the Eyeboys, the Makos. They're the people who have to start to lift up the rest of your team. Because right now, it's a best of one. You've got to win or you're going home. BLG look very calm and collected. This is their first time in playoffs with this sweat and iteration. Buckets. Sweat and buckets. Uh, <laughs> it's just hot in the venue. That's, I'm sure that's, it is. That's, that's sure normal, it is. you know. But you know, there's okay. That does not look that calm or collected. But a no. little but. bit, little <laughs> bit more, a little bit more jittery. <laughs> but like you said, they're on blue side, the most winningest of sides, and the drafts from the side of EDG have not looked great. Uh, no, you know, the red we, side we definitely the red yeah. side drafts have not looked amazing. It's kind of basically been get. 
you know, scout Silas, and then we're golden. But we'll see if that changes in this particular game. What do you want to see from BLG coming into this fifth and final series? Or fifth and final game, excuse me. So the way I see BLG uh, winning this series is just by taking hold of mid jungle priority. That's the most important thing. In one of their blue games, they got Olaf because it was unbanned. They should be looking for the same champion again. And I don't. I think it's totally fine if you put Kuro on something just supportive, like the Karma that just dominates with lane priority. Make sure that Meteor gets the superior matchup compared to Jijie. Make sure he's the main carry in that situation. I, I don't think Kuro's gonna have. Uh, it's gonna outplay Scout, uh, given what we've seen this series. But he can still contribute by just making him a push bot and having him support uh, uh, support Meteor in that situation. And now we'll see what BLG wanted to. Shivana, game one, pretty damn golden. Silas, game two and four for the side of EDG, pretty set up in what they wanted to do. I want to see if BLG get a similar draft to what they've gotten when they've won. And I want to see if EDG have got a potential answer for it. Because like we said, it's kind of been won and lost based on your first three picks in these last four games. As ladies and gentlemen, the crunch is in, and we're going into picks and bands for the fifth and final time tonight. BLG on blue, EDG on red. As we see the Kiana, the Akali, the Rakan band away, along with the Silas, the Ezra on the town, Kenj, ADD going to take down the Aatrox for a fourth time. We'll see now what EDG want to go for here, and they're looking for pretty much everything they had in that last game apart from the Gragas. Yeah, definitely looking for the same things, but they do leave the Olaf open, and that was a disaster uh, for them. Now here's the new question. Do EDG learn from their previous draft? Do they take away the Yumi or the Sivir from this composition? I think right now, having locked in your Kai'Sa, knowing that BLG have gone for it, and they finally get no scout onto, yes. the, onto, the, onto the Jace. They ban the Yumi straight away. I would not be surprised to see even potentially a Sivir ban as well, just to keep Jin Zhao down. Vladimir gonna be banned as well. You can see both sides. They want to get on the Rift. They're going through these picks and bans thick and fast. Yeah, they've definitely thought about how they want this one to play out. The big question left for EDG is what is their engaged support that they're gonna take out here? Are they gonna get the Nautilus? Are they gonna get the Volley Bear? Those are the two questions uh, that they have. And for BLG, I think that's what they have to prevent on their side as they still have their bottom side completely open. And imagine the first pick now off of the second ban phase will be for support for Mako. Had a fantastic game last time. The veteran shot caller, as you said before in the earlier, at the start of this entire series. And what can they do now with this priority? BLG, for the first time, feel like they're on the back foot. Feel like they're the ones chasing EDG. And like you said, it feels like destiny sometimes, written in the stars, that sometimes it's just a, a matter of fate that has to happen. As EDG now looking down a potential upset of a 3-2 victory. But BLG, they're looking to try and stop that one out. Yep, Jinu considering his options right here. Rumble is an EDG classic. However, it has been, uh, it has not that been that successful in, in the top lane. So I do expect Jinu actually being the one taking the Jace towards top and then having Scout on his Rumble in the mid lane. Now, this is an incredibly risky pick. If you lose priority, then it backfires and Rumble can get killed over and over again. However, you can start the roam against Olaf and Karma, which sounds nearly impossible. Uh, then he can have great impact on the side lanes and the jungle invades see where that Rumble and Jace are going. It's BLG now look to finalize their composition. Do they throw the Karma into the bot lane as a support? No, gonna look for some more hard engage. I like this from the side of BLG. They are lacking in a little bit of that hard CC and they will lock in the Alistair. And right now there's a very similar composition to what they had in game three. However, a very key difference here is they do not have that massive hyper carry in the Sivir, they had to swap that out for the Zaya, just having much better laning phase. And EDG, what do they want to finalize this composition with? Looks like the Leona could be on the cards for Mako and should will be... be locked in. So they've got themselves the Kaiza and Leona should have a little bit more kill pressure in that lane. And the team compositions are locked and loaded going into the Rift for the fifth and final time. Is this Rumble really going into the top side? This would be a first for Jinu this entire split. We have seen Rumble's mid from both Xiaohu and uh, Scout, but this will be 
one of the uh, rare occasions that EDG go back to this one. I like this a lot because you've got now the kill pressure in that mid lane. Scout can all in on top of the Karma with the Jarvan, as well as just knowing that Jinu realistically is safe against the Aatrox. Not really going to be losing unless he really hard forces something and overextends, but the coaches shake for the fifth and final time. BLG looking to find themselves to cement them as the number four team minimum. Whereas EDG trying to keep the dream alive. And EDG has never lost a game five when it uh, comes to the consideration of going to Worlds or not. When it comes down to that single last game, they've been in this position five times, twice last year already, and they have won every single game five to advance. They know what the prize is. They've been there so many times. Even if some of these newer players have not been to Worlds yet, they feel it in their bones. They feel it in the culture, in the legacy of this team. They are going to keep EDG alive, and they're going to keep EDG in that S9 run. That was a speech. <laughs> that was a speech from a veteran LPL caster. But BLG, high-flying. Pretty solid, let's be real, in this entire series, apart from that one team fight at the last moment in that game, four are looking to end the party early for EDG. Ladies and gentlemen, it's game five, we're on the rift. One team will have its world's dreams crushed. The other will advance to go against Fun Plus Phoenix. You can tell everyone's just like, no, there's too much writing on this. We don't care at this stage. Everyone hiding behind their signs, knowing that this is do or die for a lot of these fans. Last Chance Saloon, and you can see, see a very, very safe fan out from both sides, making sure nobody gets caught. We have a quick look at the runes, and let's bring ourselves back down to a regular normal level because I, we have seen how these early games have gone. Not a lot happens. It's a very important thing that EDG for the, did for their level one. First off, they sent the entire team towards the top side, made sure that there would be no vertical jungle from BLG, and that would keep Rumble alive for a lot longer. The problem with Rumble top lane is he's too easy to gank. He's too easy to snowball against, and I love what EDG did here. They they're taking every precaution possible to make sure that this Jinu lane is not going to fail. The tension could be cut with a knife as we look in towards the early stages. And right now, it's kind of hasn't really changed. I know most, most of the time we would talk about what both team wants to do, but the kind of compositions haven't really deferred that much from pretty much game one to game five now. It's ADG with the kill lane down, but it's ADD and Meteor and Kuro kind of looking for that roaming jungle kind of uh, pressure. And EDG was looking to try and snowball like they always do. I will say I still favor BLG's composition. And for me, this is the riskiest comp that EDG has run this series. It does does not have a lot of frontline options whatsoever. Uh, it's very brittle in terms of his carries. Neither Rumble or Jace have very good escapes when it comes to being chased by an Olaf with Karma. So EDG, if they want to, to win this uh, game, they really need sizable leads when it comes to the skirmish. If they're on even footing by 30 minutes, I hands down give it to BLG. See now, BLG i to see if they could find anything right now. Ward's just used there. Meteor being very respectful now, picking up the sweeping trinket, making sure he's not spotted out. But we'll not find that little ward on his Krug. So information in the advantage of EDG. And you can see BLG very tentative. Haven't seen this much respect given from the side of the BLG bot side for the entire series. They're very aware that EDG could just look to snowball this bot side. Good wards being placed by EDG, and I do want to drop a mention about the runes Jinu just brought. It's much more about the team fight rather than the laning phase. You do see him with Gathering Storm and the Nimbus Cloak, so he's not looking to take Scorch uh, up in the top side to, to give himself a comfortable lane. He's really banking on those team fights. In a comp like this, EDG needs to pray for good rolls on the, these Drakes. If they get the Mountain or the Infernal and they can force BLG into a 5v5 early on, it's so damn good for their composition. 
But you see Kuro taking the minion to materializer as well. So realizing that Scout will have a priority and push have being on the Jace. And, and for Scout, he's had a fantastic series overall, but now it really comes down to him justifying those Jace bans, really looking to see if it was worth it for the side of BLG and try and take over this mid lane from that position. Now, we've seen this matchup before, and I have to say it does not go well for uh, the Jace. You, you get a bit of a lead, you get to push Karma early on, but when Olaf comes looking for you, you just die. <laughs> There's not much you can do in that lane, so if EDG wants to stretch their advantages, they have to do it quite fast. Oh, Janu flashes, ADD flashes in as well, will not get the Infernal Chains. They will get the Flash from Meteor as well, but they haven't got the damage, and I feel like that was a little bit of a miscommunication there from the BLG top and jungler. Yeah, you can see Meteor not very happy with that one. ADD flash in when Meteor was backing out, so communication lacking on that gank, and that's going to be a good summoner trade for EDG. Two for one, always fun to get in the, uh, in the shops, regardless of what you're buying. It's always weird, isn't it? Like when you get two for one, it doesn't matter what you're buying, you're always gonna be like, oh, hell yeah. Except for plastic back. But whoa, whoa. Scout, Coral giving some serious respect there to the Jace, flashing immediately as the two disguise was even a possibility for Scout to engage upon. He was worried about the knockback, but uh, uh, still, it's, it's playing super safe. I think it's playing a bit too safe in that situation. I was gonna say, it feels like right now, BLG are kind of gotten into their head, their own heads a little bit. It feels like they've kind of, they're overcompensating for a lot of these kind of, you know, little small things that EDG are going. And yeah. they need to calm themselves down, bring themselves back down to earth because, again, they didn't play badly in any of the four games, even the two losses. They just, you know, need to kind of continue that and, sh you know, shore up a couple of the small mistakes. The furthest someone has gone in Worlds between these two teams has actually been Kuro to the to the World Champion Finals. So he should be calming the team down. He's the biggest veteran here. And uh, to, to see him kind of throw away flashes early like that it is a bit of a worrying sign. Like, I think BLG, if they just stay to their strengths, they still have a great chance in this game. See just how afraid Kuro has to play now, knowing that his flash is down and the pure CC train that can come in from JJ and Mako. And that's going to be the Cloud Drake started up nice and early here for EDG. Six and a half minutes. Kuro is around. They have got a ward on it as well, but Olaf very, very far away from this particular objective. They're actually going to commit ADD's TP to this as well, so they're looking to try and just make this a 5v4 straight off the bat. They're going to flash in, get the knockup, but here's the TP off the backside as well as the re-engage might come in. Flash is being burned left, right, and center. Kuro has nowhere to go, and the e are going to be dropped down onto everybody. ADD, though, is doing the damage. ADD and Olaf just able to put down so, so much. Mako is still there. Scout still looking. They go he back the in. Double knock up onto him as they look for more and more help bars are blinking scout flashes it's a one for none trade and overall it ends up being a dragon taken by edg and they back themselves away wow that was such a risky fight coming in from blg i, I didn't think that they would throw all of the marbles down at just a cloud drake for that one but they do outplay in the end i, I think that was a a clean kill pickup kill and I, I'm really impressed by how ADD was able to frontline that. One for one. Excuse me, I misspoke and I said one for one. The dead timers are so uh, so short right now that I was able to uh, convince, uh, confuse myself. But that's a huge wave it's going wave. away right now. EDG going to lose a lot of experience, a lot of you know money as well, just straight up going away and going into the pockets of BLG. And I've always got away for his uh, support. He can't go into this. He's just going to keep losing. This is actually a great move here from BLG. They get themselves three turret plates and lose a huge amount of XP from the side of EDG. Yep, BLG go up 500 gold after that entire bout. I, I'm just I'm still super surprised that they went in for that extremely risky play that could have backfired, but they knew the strength in ADD, and ADD maneuvered it so well. Frontline tanking all the time, keeping the carries low, forcing Jidja out of the fight earlier on, and they turned what could have been a disaster or best-case scenario for EDG into a good favorable win for them. You see them now just trying to burst this one down. They will get the red buff steal, but Mako... In a little bit of trouble. Mako bye bye. is going to go down as well. Gets CC locked, and that's a little bit of an overstep there from the side of EDG. Trading a red buff for a life, definitely not worth it. Yeah, you don't really want to get the uh, start these fights inside BLG's jungle without Jinu. I think Jinu, 
uh, comes in. He's a big difference maker. He's great inside the jo those jungle fights, but without him, I, I don't think the EDG four man's actually better than BLG. BLG can just run you down with the Ola. We'll see now what EDG want to do. Looks like they're going to just try and get this bot lane going, and this is going to be see exactly what this jungle mid combo can do. And oh no, Alistair has no idea. He's going to get burst and he's going to get taken down. Scout picks up one. They're going to drop down the Cataclysm as well, knowing that the Flash is probably going to have to be burned here. They will get the damage. Killer Instinct goes in, but he won't get the damage. Oh Ay boy, outplayed Jin Zhao, picking that one up. And they're just going to try and look for this one straight off. But Scout overall picks himself up a double kill. And that's what EDG want. They're trying to snowball the mid lane. Yeah, that was a really good move on EDG's part. Even though they lost someone on the previous initiation, they did figure out there's no wards on this route. They could make that clean play. And unfortunately for BLG, they were not on the right side of the map to react to that one. And I have to say, even with the tower plating and the kill going over, that's a massive win for EDG. They're going to guarantee Scout having mid lane priority. Picks himself up a very early Yomuz. has got all three kills. And you can see exactly how this one went. Definitely wanted to secure this kill. I feel like iBoy just kind of overestimated his own damage. He really wants the passive to proc on this one. You can see him as he goes in with the Killer Instinct. Yep, that's one. That's two, that's three. Ah, he doesn't get the fourth proc and Jinjal stays alive. Good outplay on his part, but can't change the positioning on the map. EDG have this overloaded and they finish off the duo. No Cataclysm available for Jinu right now. Rift Herald has been started. It's pretty much straight off spawn. BLG kind of trying to up the tempo, kind of up themselves up to try and go for this one right now. Rumble is up towards the top side. This is going to be another 5v5 fight, and this is completely different to what we've seen from both these sides. Neither willing to give an inch, neither both wanting to take a mile. As the Rift Herald is almost certainly going to have to respawn, or reset, I should say. As they go in, there's a Hex Flash, gonna jump in, does not quite get the knock up, but there is the Equalizer on the backside of this fight, as now EEG look to try and just turn this fight. Gold Golden on both their sides, they take down the support. They're now getting flashes out of this one as well. And they're gonna keep pushing on top oh, of this! Fight Sniped! Scout gets himself another kill as they keep pushing for this fight. iBoy though, gonna use the Killer Instinct, will not be able to take down Kuro just yet at all will sacrifice his life, but it is EDG now with five kills onto Scout, and EDG starting to feel themselves in this series. They could not be stopped right there. What a good reaction to the sudden engage from Xingmo. We saw Mako going in and making sure that nobody could follow up on the damage, and EDG dragged that out so long that Jinu got his equalizer back. BLG had the right calculations. There was no all on the top side. They had a strong positioning, but EDG were willing to wait them out. And let's see exactly how this fight goes. Because like you said, it just takes so long for them to go for this engage. Yeah, it does seem like to me that they were a little bit indecisive. And it's, excuse me, it was JJ with a great EQ to stop ADD going on to Scout. Scout would have died there if he did not, uh, if he was not protected. And even though iBoy does over chase here, it doesn't stop the fact that Scout is massive. Seeing the picture in picture, it was uh, Jinu going down there, unfortunately, with no summoners left after that small engage in the top side. Does get himself caught out, so a little bit of a kill given over there to the side of BLG. But the Rift Herald was taken by EDG. The important thing right now is they're the ones getting the objectives. They're the ones who are kind of dictating the tempo. And like I said, I feel like BLG are just kind of gotten inside their own heads a little bit, kind of forcing stuff they don't really need to force. Yeah, they're definitely playing with the jitters this game, which is something we didn't expect from such a stoic team like uh, BLG. They've held their own so well throughout the entire regular split. They never seem to be the ones that are rushing things. However, in that team fight, I, I feel like they're just oscillating between going too aggressive and playing too safe at the same time. It's a really weird comp, comp, uh, combination of mental fatigue that's happening here. And this is the beauty of a five-game series. As you say, mental fatigue, and I'm saying beauty, but it does put you into these situations that very few people know what to do. You're now playing League of Legends for nearly four and a half hours. You're now looking at a situation where you've been ready to go pretty much probably for eight hours. You've been scrimming probably for 10 hours in the day. You know, yep. it's it's a long, long day. It's not just one particular outlet of just games. And right now, it's on to the veteran players, like we talked about in the pregame, to calm the nerves, to get everyone back on track, to bring back this game, you know, ADDs, the Kuros, to tell them all to just to calm down. We've got this. 
Let's just do our own game. Yeah, definitely. If BLG can take this one, it will come from a lot of credit from Kuro, from his veteranship, to just tell the team, hey, you know what? We have to play with what's reasonable right here, you know? Throw your fears into the wind. In that Herald play, 100% they should not have let the Herald reset. They should have straight went for it before the uh, Equalizer could ever come into effect. They did the dance with EDG and paid the price for it. So they just need to clear their heads right now. I still think BLG does have that scaling composition, and they're not really in a deficit whatsoever. You look at the gold, they're still fine. Yeah, they are absolutely fine. Yes, they lost the Rift Herald, and yes, they lost the two Drakes, but it's an ocean and a cloud. It's not exactly game-breaking, and nothing is stacking. As we see, there is the turret plates. A little bit of an advantage going over to the side of BLG. But again, overall, BLG not in a bad situation. I feel like they're kind of, like we said, just kind of getting themselves the jitters, you know, just need to kind of calm themselves down. Still in a fantastic spot, and still have fantastic damage coming into these mid to late game team fights. What we're seeing right now is BLG start to take over when the map is spread more open and they have the split pushing advantage. Neither Scout nor uh, nor Jinu should be able to deal with ADD come into the late game. So it's going to be harder and harder for EDG to pick their moments and use that siege from Scout. Well, lane turret will be picked up. It's going to be the first turret of the game going over to Scout as he has been the biggest benefactor of all of these, you know, kills and gold and everything. And Got to give a good shout out as well to JJ with 100% kill participation along actually the side of iBoy. So you can see where the emphasis has been. It's been get the gold onto Scout, make sure that this Jace is worthy. Oh wow. my god, that was a straight up dust blade. Uh, that was disgusting. At 15 minutes, two items. Two lethality items picked up for him right now. Let's have a look at how the items are kind of going on as a whole as we look around. As Jinu able to nearly pick himself up a. Uh, uh, Morello's not quite there yet is going up against a black cleaver though so ADD still in a fantastic position to be able to turn around these fights the Ludens picked up for the Karma didn't actually go with the Unthieves of Holy Grail just yet because realizes I, he needs to be able to wave clear otherwise he's just not going to be able to go toe to toe with Scout and again Essence Reaper versus Man Immune there's not really a huge difference so right now EDG are ahead with Scout and that's kind of about it yeah, it really comes down to how these team fights are played. If EDG is allowed to get some time on their opponents, they're allowed to just poke them out, then I give it clearly to EDG. However, if BLG are able to get into the back line with Olaf or, a uh, or Aatrox, they should wipe the floor with EDG. It's actually a very nice edge type of fight about positioning a lot of the times. For the first game in all four games, I want to say, Meteor has been silent. Meteor has not found the early game pressure that we've known him to do or to be able to facilitate for BLG. Right now, he's going to have to try and work with this Karma. But again, I feel like they've kind of lost that little bit of an edge with the early game purely because they've just been second guessing themselves so much. Uh, yeah, I think the problem with this one, uh, wait a minute, does JJ have an angle on this? No, it doesn't look like Jinu wants to follow up here. Uh, the problem right now is that Olaf can't really rush into the enemy comp because he dies just to, due to the damage of Scout. He has uh, just one Ninja Tabby as his defensive item right here, and Scout is running close to 40 uh, lethality at this point. He's got a lot. The top turret will go down, so BLG will take themselves equal, or excuse me, not equaling. Uh, getting themselves ahead 45 seconds before this dragon spawns. TPs are available across the boards. Flashes ignite everything at your disposal. You can see all the, the relevant players going out and buying those pink wards, getting themselves into a position that they know they can contest for this dragon. As Jin Zhao just gets absolutely chunked out of that. And we that see the Cataclysm game. coming down. JJ, though, maybe looking for a little bit of a move here onto Meteor. Actually takes an unfavorable trade, I feel. And this is the jitters from both sides now. EDG showing they weren't exactly on the right, you know, kind of setting for that, and they've just lost themselves the Cataclysm. Yeah, don't understand that one whatsoever. There was still a flash on Meteor anyway. Uh, but this is Jinu's time to shine. This is the perfect scenario for a, for a Equalizer to come down. And BLG, they're walking on thin ice. They need that initiation onto the back line. JJ, though, if he goes down, that's going to be certainly the dragon going over to the side of BLG. And I feel like EDG, they just need to back away. You haven't got your jungler right now. The health bars are still relatively healthy for the side of 
As she uses a smite. There's the actual equalizer going over. They're going to use the solar flare, get the flash out of Kuro. They go in, there's no flash available. They do not get it. It's going to be BLG who end up securing that one. And now the fight ensues. JJ's going to try and keep himself alive. He will fall. It's a one for none. Dragon did go over to BLG as they look for more. ADD still in a position to be able to go for this. Leona gets deleted as not able to do it. And BLG will keep pushing. BLG will keep finding those kills. And BLG will take the fight. But Scout does survive with his bounty and life intact. That one was extremely close at the end of the day. EDG were going in without key ultimates, without key combos on the roster, and they don't find that first kill they're looking for. Wow. Oh my god, there is a flash available for Scout, but one shock blast combination. But I don't understand JJ right there. He had no smite. They were only fishing for kills. They, they knew that they weren't going to be able to take uh, the uh, the Drake down, but wait a minute. Scout 1v3, what, what are you doing? What is this? Scout just Hello? looking for stuff. He has no mana though, flashes away, will get jumped on. This is gonna be a 1v5 and he's gonna go down. Scout, what are you doing? What the hell was that? He was going so far behind enemy lines and his entire team is gonna pay for it. They're losing summoners. ADD now 2-0 and 4. This Aatrox is well and truly online. Scout thought he saw an opportunity, but all he did was send himself to the gray screen. EDG now starting to panic, now starting to feel the panic set in. Yeah, they understand that this composition is not supposed to work late in the late game, and they're currently staring down a 3k gold lead. It seems like Scout tried to take things into his own hand, but that was just so perplexing. There was no vision on the red side either. Let's see how this dragon fight wins, and let's see now, like right now, there is no smite Ooh. onto this Jarvan. He goes in, he would have been in a position to steal had he had smite. That was a poor communication between Mako and Jinu. They actually would have killed Jinjao there if they got the uh, ultimates at the same time. Instead, the carries are able to walk out. There are no, they don't have any combo anymore in a wombo combo composition, and all they can do is just run away. EDG, this is where pressure kind of gets to you right now. And as you said, a 3,000 gold lead now for BLG. BLG now can take that knowing that their veteran players in ADD and Kuro have got themselves some gold, have got themselves some items, and they could be the reason why they can come back into this. Right now, EDG kind of floundering around looking for whatever they can as Jinu gets Infernal Chain, but backs away, and Scout is still running towards this bot side. You can see Scout, he kind of almost looks a bit panicked. He's kind of running around asking himself, kind of going, like, I need to find someone to kill, otherwise we lose this game. Yeah, and I love what BLG are doing. They recognize their 1 3 1 potential, and they're just spreading EDG across the map. They can send Kuro into the top lane. He's impossible to chase down without, I think, at least three members here coming in from EDG. So they're really taking away all the poke conditions that EDG can thrive with uh, with Scout. And that item build as well this time. He knows he's going into a poke war, and Kuro is dead set on finishing it. <laughs> Kuro's just saying, all right, guys, look, I'm not doing the same game as game three, all right? We're gonna, I'm, I am the carry. I've been to Worlds. I know the pressure. I didn't win Worlds, but I've been there. <laughs> you know, no Athenes, and uh, this one is pretty much just making sure that Olaf can get to the back line. Heavier AP ratios, bigger shields on that one. So making sure Meteor can chase down Scout, I think that's the thought process behind this compared to the uh, 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 compared to the Athenes that we've been seeing earlier. Big win right now for the side of EDG is their mid lane turret has yet to fall. They still have got some fantastic wave clear and they've got opportunities to really look for some engages should they go for it. They are going to get the ultimate straight away. They will be able to lock him down. Just getting ultimates and poke down. That's very well set up by EDG, but can they get anything else? EDG ADD going to find himself. That's a good equalizer to try and cut off, but there's no one actually moving forward that's going to be a great equalizer if they were pushing them back up the ramp. And they just end up giving over JJ for free. I feel like EDG, they're kind of falling apart right now. Yeah, EDG, that was a situation where they could have backed off easily. They saw ADD coming, but they were indecisive in their shot calling, and JJ gets caught out as a result. And you're not going to be able to catch ADD. It's just not going to happen. The guy's just too tanky, too big. And right now, you can see JJ was looking for something there, tried to make the equalizer work, but it just was a little bit too far forward. And 
You live and die by these big team fight ultimates you've kind of picked up for the mid game, and that's going to be a dragon going over to the side of BLG. They will equal that up two to two. What you need you want is to create a pyre. Uh, you basically have the Cataclysm and then the Equalizer going down, but they've not been able to set that one up a so hot far. A a hot hot I like the pyre, because you're actually burning people in a pyre. I've had hot pot, all right? <laughs> hot pot burned my mouth off. <laughs> well, you weren't in the hot pot. See, that's where the uh, that's where the metaphor and neither, falls and apart. And neither were BLG. Okay. See? <laughs> Wait, it does, it's a hot pot. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. I, I'm, I'm going a bit too dark and grim here. I'll, 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 I'll take the hot pot. I just short. like going with cultural references, you know? Hot pot's great. I like hot pot. They have duck, pirates duck in blood. China, too. I know, but <laughs> duck blood was good. That's when we get dark. If you haven't tried Hot Pot and Duck Blood, try it out. It's actually oh, quite it's nice. Amazing. I wasn't expecting it to be as nice when you guys were like mentioning all the different uh, Can animals. Can we skip the gym and just go Hot Pot today? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> That's what you want to do, but you can't. <laughs> Got to be strong, Clement. Okay, okay. I'll be strong. I'll but be strong. we'll go for Hot Pot tomorrow, maybe. That's the problem. Because, you know, we got Clement, or not Clement, we got Raz and, uh, and Hysterics casting tomorrow. True, true, yeah. true. LNG Hot and RNG. A lot of NGs. As we come back to this game, is they if I'm BLG, I take this one slow. I'm not starting the Baron whatsoever. I'm not applying that magic resistance deep up to myself against this comp. Especially if you're looking at the side of EDG, you've got a lot of kind of, you know, burst poke within a small area, especially around the Baron Pit. You drop the Equalizer, the Cataclysm, the Hell, the even the Solar Flare to lock people down. You can do a hell of a lot in that team fight. However, Still needs to make a move somehow. We talked about how their siege isn't exactly the greatest. And that is still very much ringing through right now. Good wave clear from the side of EDG means that it's going to be very difficult for BLG to knock down these remaining structures. But the positive right now for the side of EDG, I suppose, is that they can now use this time to scale up, get some items onto your Kaiser, get some more poke potential to onto your onto Scout. And you've got Azania's now finished up onto Jinnu, so you're looking at a pretty scary mid-game fight. It's actually, pr I honestly think it's pretty even coming into the late, late-game team fights, just purely because of the way these teams are set up with the pure burst they have. Yeah, the uh, the burst damage in the late game, especially when you have the Azania's, then the uh, the the potential for you to just get caught out and run over by the Olaf significantly decreases. But I still think around the 32, uh, 30, like just in the early part of the 30 minute mark should be favored towards BLG. It's pure, before you see all that natural HP just come in for uh, for Jason. Jason was actually buffed a little bit in his most recent patch where he does pack a bit more of, uh, of an oomph come late game. Those are some big numbers flying out, uh, out of ADD's, uh, I suppose it's a sword? It's a giant two-handed sword. Now BLG trying to just get themselves within a position. We can see the difficulty they're having, though, which is kind of uh, wow. sieging up. That being said, if you chunk Scout down below half HP, which are Death Cap, Luden's Karma, you don't have to worry about that siege. And there's no healing on Jace, so he's going to have to go back for a while here. He's going to possibly look to try and go for this, and they're just trying to split the, la the waves 1-3-1 one, one, or 0-4-1 right now. Poke not landing from Scout means that he's not really able to make any of the the moves he needs to make, he needs to land those shock blasts if he wants to try and make an impact on this team fight. They're finally rotating Jinnu over, giving up the uh, the bot lane tower most likely. And this is the problem with EDG's comp, you are running a wombo, wombo combo, your four man is not very good. You need the damage from Jinnu. As I said it though, ADD gets caught out and they're going to force him back off the tower. Good killer instinct from iDoy, iBoy, excuse me, and very rare we see that used as aggressively. Yeah. However, everyone committed towards the bot side, which means that mid lane turret does go down. That was pretty cool for my boy because he had to land the W in order for that one to work. Rumble doesn't give you the hard crowd control. Uh, unfortunately, ADD able to just pop World Ender and get across the wall, so they're going to be safe after that one. And they will pick themselves up on the side of BLG, a mid lane tier two. It does mean that EDG, though, however, will get some decent uh, vision control or vision uh, themselves over this Baron Pit. BLG starting to pick up three items. You've now got the GA onto the ADD. You've got yourself a three item Zaya. You've also got the Zeke's Convergence for your Alistair. So definitely working towards their kind of mid game to late game power. 
5,000 gold is the lead for BLG right now. They need to be man so axe. careful. I was going to say, like, if they had have had all five members available for that, the Alistair flashes in and gets a four-man knock-up. There is nothing EDG can do. They need to be very, very aware that this is a potential pitfall for them. EDG's uh, entire team is actually quite brittle uh, outside of the outside of the Jarvan. Ooh, but Meteor, what are you doing? Speaking of brittle, Meteor going to be taking down about half HP, which means that this Dragon fight potentially could go in favor of EDG. So they're just starting to lay down the poke. This is good for EDG. BLG now having to play dance to the beat of their drum. Scout going to get chunked down to about half. And oh no, JJ is caught. And then the two-man pulverizer are going to try and drop down the Cataclysm on ultimate. top of the Equalizer. They will get a decent amount of damage, but the side of BLG are able Blink to fight on. back. Two guys go golden, and two guys go to the gray screen as the rest of BLG are now fighting on EDG. They're looking for Ibo. They're looking for Mako. It's a quadra kill. It's not going to be the Penta, but BLG have taken the fight. And BLG, after the dance, they find Jijie caught unawares, and they clean everything up. Great follow-up from Xingmo. ADD doesn't even lose his GA. They can go for the end right here, right now, in the same fashion that EDG took game four. BLG will take game five, three to two. They will lock themselves into a rout with FBX, and overall, thoroughly deserved by BLG. BLG from not making playoffs in Spring Split to taking down the world's guaranteed team in EDG. Finally, the younger brother is able to take over the day. They, they started from IMA all the way to this new organization, still very close to EDG, but still always feeling like they were in the older brother's shadow. They haven't been able to beat EDG this year before this point, but they finally managed to do it in a best of five. It's not about how you start, it's how you finish. And BLG, take game five, take the 3-2 series. And they'll guarantee themselves a top four finish, and top four points. They're still searching for at least a third place spot to get themselves into Gauntlet and Worlds, but the dream is alive for them. And of course, commiserations though to EDG. It was Valiant. It looked like they potentially had the answers. But I feel like small little mistakes, a little bit of jitters, as you said, just kind of got to them in the end. And there was just too many times that players and their team got caught out. And this is just such a historic moment. No king rules forever. And finally, EDG has to abdicate the throne to the newcomers of the LPL. They walk down. This means that they will not be able to participate in Season 9 Worlds, ending a five-year streak from them how things can change in the LPL. It seemed like they were always going to be in that position, but uh, there's always newcomers, always better and more talented teams nipping at your heels, and BLG are finally the ones to take the fratricide to end EDG's streak here as ADD finds his way across the corner, but Xingmo can't find his way across that keyboard. <laughs> Still got the win. BLG will find themselves now in a semi-final bout with FBX. Wow, this is... Uh, I, congratulations to BLG. Kudos to them. This is a massive moment. They're changing the course of LPL history at this point. However, we do have to remember the conditions for them that to go into Worlds. They at least need a third place finish. So even if they drop to FBX, they still need to uh, get a victory in that third or fourth place match to get that 70 points. And heartbreaking for EDG fans across the world, realistically. They, they had Scout on Jace. They got the Jace ahead, and it wasn't enough. We talked, to, you know, the nerves are very much a thing here, and you can see both sides not willing to give an inch, but wanting to take a mile. And there was a lot of uncharacteristic mistakes from both sides. I don't think that last game was clean from BLG either. They eventually calmed themselves down. ADD and Kuro able to kind of set themselves up nicely. And I feel like Meteor, again, had a fantastic game despite being kept, you know, subdued in those early games. Yeah, EDG, they just live and die by how good their talent is compared to the rest of the league. They were going for a very risky composition with the Rumble and the uh, the Jace that doesn't allow you many play styles in the late game. It's pretty much wombo combo or nothing. And once they didn't close down on those Drake fights, you could see the momentum shifting back into BLG's uh, BLG side. And I think that's a great encapsulation of uh, EDG's 
uh, end here. Uh, mm -hmm. Back in season 2015, uh, where they won MSI, you could say they had the best players at every single position, but that's no longer the case. I think you can only make it for maybe the mid lane into Scott, who's in the top three. i very hes hesitant to put Mako even in that conversation as well. And they haven't branched out. I think that's the problem uh, for Edward Gaming here. Congratulations to BLG. We hope that we can see uh, this team just kind of rise. And I also hope that this will be a good call for uh, Edward Gaming to kind of look at themselves and change just their style that they've hung on for so many years. Very easy, obviously, to kind of focus on the EDG story, but they're in the past. Yes, they're yes. gone it's now. It's BLG's day Behind now. us. It's BLG. It's BLG. We look to the future, and their future have FBX in it. And Ooh. that is a true testament to how how much you can survive in an early game. You know, we saw about it today. We talked about how EDG loved to get that early game snowball. EDG were nullified. They didn't get those early game snowballs pretty much four out of the five games apart from game four. Now we're looking at a team that live on the edge of just speed, aggression. You know, you, you know, they just look to try and take you down as fast as possible. That's going to be a test for Kuro and ADD to try and shore up. BLG versus EDG. We felt that BLG was the heavy favorites coming into the series. EDG actually outperformed from what we've seen mm -hmm. so far. But against FPX, it would take a real miracle for BLG to make it over them. In the regular spits so far, it's been straight clean 2-0s from FPX. And they've been crushing defeats. What we've been seeing is that Doinbi had an even, large, even larger edge in the matchup versus Kuro than compared to Scout. So... For, for BLG to make it over FPX, I really think they need to pull something that is completely unseen from in the champion pool. They need to fight fire with fire against the 18 champions that Doinbi can pull out. And I was going to say, like, you know, for, for BLG to take down FBX, they have to equal the amount of w losses FBX picked up in the regular split. Three losses. That was, oh, sorry, it was four. It was four. It, it was, was four. four. Right. V5 I, and LGD did win. <laughs> I, did, I did remember the V5 one. But my point, like, you know, again, like, you need to nearly equal that. You need to basically nearly double it coming into the, you know, to take a best of five off them, you need to win three games. The signing light, I suppose, for the side of BLG is they're getting some experience on the playoff stage. FBX last split didn't look so great. It was kind of a random 3-2 loss to top esports at the top. Sorry, JD Gaming, yes. excuse me, um, in the in the semifinals, despite having some, you know, spring split dominance as well. So they've got some questions to answer of their own. I feel like BLG aren't going to be afraid of the, you know, the, the giant phoenix burning in front of them. Yeah, the, the main question I'm just I'm just worried about for uh, for BLG versus FBX is we know BLG, they're very reserved in the laning phase. They, they will take CS losses if they can get to that late game and scale up. However, stylistically, that really does open up Tian and Dormi to kind of do whatever they want. And mm. that's what we've been seeing in the matchup so far. So I want to see what other mid and jungle uh, mid and jungle duos that BLG can pull off. Karma and Olaf is great for preventing that exact style, but I'm pretty sure they're not going to get Olaf. Probably not going to sure. get Olaf. Yeah, yeah, like Meteor has shown that he is just a fantastic jungler on a multiple of different, you know, picks as well. We saw yep. Svivana today, he played the Gragas, he played the Jarvan, he played the Olaf, of course. I don't think that the Olaf is, you know, a, a the pick they should be getting no, in the FBX not. series. However, we look at towards BLG and how they would look to try and take that series. There's just too many things. LWX having a fantastic split on his own right, and he's been seen as like the backstage of you know of the entire FBX show. He hasn't been the front and center, and that makes that's why people are hyping up FBX as one of the potential top four teams at Worlds, let alone China. All three teams are excellent. That's basically yep. what we have to say. Gimgoon having career split. LWX was the greatest slayer in this regular season, over 200 yes. kills. Uh, <laughs> being selected. You know, it, second, I, I will second say, greatest I will say, just, just shout for, out to Jack. Just for, for your information, <laughs> on the Chinese broadcast, they only start the stat count from 2016 because they is, don't have the data that base. Is so totally even fair. on the uh, Who Ya stuff you'll see, all of that starts from 2016. That's totally, so, that's yeah. totally fair. I'm not criticizing it. I'm just going to say thank you to Jack for reaching out to that us. That is true. And, uh, Uzi did get better. Yeah, yeah. he uh, he definitely did. Uzi still has the 7 point, I think 4, I think it was, yeah. or something like that. So still a little bit higher. But like you said, doesn't take away from the fact that LWX has just been an unbelievable monster in that bot side. And again, hasn't been the star of the show. It's been Tien, it's been Doombi, it's been Gimgoon, it's been these guys just kind of coming in and kind of saying like, 
we're amazing and there's not really a lot you can do about it. Like we've seen, we saw what they did to, to top esports. Now, everyone well, everyone can turn around and say, well, top weren't really trying. It's just like, I don't care. If I get 2 owed by the team who's just ahead of me and they swap their jungle to mid, I'm a little salty. Uh, yeah, I, I think BLG are banking off two things. Number one, they didn't really reveal much in this series. We knew he was good on the Olaf the entire way, so yep. that's that's no surprise for me or there. And number two, Join B does have kind of that playoff curse on him. In the last, uh, he had his overall five playoff uh, tries in his career, and he's only been able to advance once, despite being heavy favorites on a lot of these series he's been playing. And honestly, in JD Gaming series in Spring Split, I feel like Doinby was part of the reason of the collapse at the end of it. Definitely mm -hmm. very over-aggressive uh, at the end. So that's going to be kind of the things that each team are trying to break out of. BLG trying to seize the day. You know, back when Aimei was, uh, they were Aimei and Jinjiao, they did go to Worlds in 2016. They're looking to repeat that success on the new organization. And for FPS, they're finally waiting to burst onto the scene. Speaking of Jinjiao, we've got our MVP, and it is going to be Jinjiao as our MVP of the fifth and final game. Congratulations to him. Did have a fantastic game, and overall, it was so hard to pick an MVP in this particular one. Yeah, I think the quadruple kill definitely tipped <laughs> the, uh, the scales the in scales, his favor yeah. <laughs> right there, but very good performances overall, and these are the situations where I feel like EDG could have played a little bit better and came out with the win. You can see the ultimate from Leona, not really syncing up with the equalizer, letting them get out of the situation, and the comeback potential from ADD with his sustain is just too much. And as well, the patience that came out from BLG right now, realizing they didn't have to panic. Yes, the Jarvan just made himself, but little small things, like you know, the Jarvan got himself in the pit, but they recognized, hang on, he has a lot more HP than he did when we left him. So obviously recognizing this might have been used, that minimum it was a 15 second cooldown and this was the final fight that just ended it all for the side of EDG and BLG it's it's a good sign for them they got themselves to a five game situation they are now 100 percent in terms of five game situation or game five situations I should say and overall feeling pretty good at the bare minimum even if they do get dumpstered by FBX in the semifinals. They've got the potential third place playoff. They have shown that they can't beat pretty much everybody else, that they're not a, you know, a fifth or sixth team that find themselves in the top four. They are 100% a top four team, and they deserve to be there. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, Raz has made his predictions. We will see BLG in the gauntlet. Personally, I do think so uh, as well. If they get 70 points, they will knock JD Gaming out of it yep. just because of the summer point priority in happening in that one. So the way the points work before we kind of move on from that. JD Gaming, of course, still had 70 points from their a uh, second place in spring. Right. So the mark is pretty much 70 points. To get 70 points, you need a minimum of third because BLG have zero points right now. So opportunity is there. Even if they lose the next one, they still have to you know look forward to kind of go, right, we need to come back and really push for that third place. And then that pushes them into Gauntlet. Worlds is still very much alive. Yeah, that's a, that's a further discussion we have to have going down the line. But, uh, you know, we're going to hear from some of the BLG members now. Congratulations to BLG taking down this playoffs. And we have two probably the best performing players in Jinja and Meteor. Hello, everyone. I am Guo Hao. BLG is jungler, and I am Jinja. This series went the full distance. Did you guys expect that this series would be this close? Did you feel like you had revenge over EDG? <laughs> I don't know why it took to five games. And it just feels like blue side just has too much of an advantage. Blue side won everything today. <laughs> We did think about it, but we didn't think it would be this hard. You can see him sweating. This is the first best of five that Meteor has played in his career in the LPL. Today I met Meteor in the backstage, and Meteor said that he was a bit anxious about going on stage. How did you soothe your emotions? 
And I just thought about the game, and after we got into it, I felt less and less nervous. Today, before going up against EDG, what preparations did you guys do? Coach Sin told us to keep ourselves calm and just play it like a regular season game. The BPs today have been really interesting. Meteor, you selected Shivana on the last pick. Why did you go for the Shivana? This champion is very fun. And I think she's really strong. You guys have selected Aatrox for ADD in all the last three games. Why have you done that? Ad feels like uh, this champion is unbeatable in 1v1s, and uh, ADD is very comfortable with this champion, so we just picked it for him. In the early game, sometimes you would have a deficit. How do you react to that situation? Well, uh, if the enemy has an early game champion, you just give them a bit of resources, that's all. In the final game five, you guys selected the exact same three champions. Why did you pick the exact same comp here? Because this composition is something that we are the most confident in. And uh, we felt like uh, they forgot about the, some of the champions in this composition later on, so we just kind of repeat it, but we didn't get it in game five. <laughs> Today, Jin Zhao, you got two quadra kills, but why didn't you get a penna? I think both of these quadras were kind of sudden. And we didn't have a chance to communicate that I wanted the penna. If you wanted to summarize EDG's performance today, how would you uh, rate it? <laughs> uh, so Jinja answers for his team. I, I feel like Meteor uh, was very stable and sometimes did like to put on a show. I think Jinja today was flawless. Last question from the fans. Uh, so this is Jinja asking something to Meteor. What are the five types of spices in the world? Not too spicy, a little bit spicy, medium spice. Uh, above average spice and very spicy. And then Meteor answers, no, it's... Uh, it's, I miss you, which sounds the same as spice. Uh, doesn't translate that well, I'm sorry. <laughs> and uh, out of the five spices, how spicy was that series? Uh, I'd, I'd give it a, you know, an above average spice, you know, like a four out of five, because I didn't expect four EDG to actually high. make it. That four far, four out of five is pretty spicy. It is pretty spicy. Yeah, like over, uh, like overwhelmingly, it was a BLG advantage uh, most of the time. But EDG made a series out of it just with those two Baron picks. Yeah, pretty, pretty much. But obviously, of course, we are now looking at a potential return to the world stage for Kuro, and I feel like that's that's going to be in the back of his mind. You go from literally one step away from the best prize in League of Legends to not really doing much for a very long time, and I feel like this is kind of a really good redemption arc for him, just as a player. Yeah, it's been a couple of years in the making since he reached that big stage, and I think this goes to show you like Kuro's style and diversity in terms of his uh, play. You don't have to be the best mechanical player, but you can overcome a lot of your difficulties with hard work, with just the veteranship, with calmness, and with smart plays across the map. Third one obviously being the most important one here, but... Uh... Definitely one of the most important, but... 
We'll have to look at tomorrow's games as well, or tomorrow game or series. It is going to be RNG versus LNG for a fight for that last top four spot. Of course, RNG still chasing world's qualification and LNG still on the high of taking down IG 3 and 0. Yeah, and they will remain as uh, one of our seeds from 2018. And if they don't make it here over LNG, they will follow EDG as being eliminated out of world contention, only getting 10 points in the spring split. So if they fall, no hope for the qualifiers. And I gotta say, Flandre is looking damn scary coming into this. He really, really is. LNG just found their on button and they found a couple extra gears in that series yesterday, of course. And BLG taking down EDG today does mean they've set themselves up with a showdown between them and Fun Plus Phoenix. That, of course, will be next Saturday. It's a week away, so they've got a week of t you know to prep to have a bit of celebrations. You know, I feel like they can celebrate a little bit. Oh, you mean for BLG? Yeah. Yeah, of course, of course. If you're going up against FBX, I'm celebrating like there's no tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's well, a guys, really difficult matchup. We yeah. did it. Uh, but of course, ladies and gentlemen, that is all we're going to have time for today. Thank you so much to my co-caster, to the production team, of course, behind the scenes, and everyone else of you, every one of you guys, for watching us and watching these fantastic series. We will be back tomorrow at the same time for more League of Legends LPL playoff action, and we'll see you guys then.